Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to New Stos. And looking through the rest of 2022, I mean, we've had some really good games released so far this year, including Pokemon Legends Arceus, we've had Horizon Forbidden West, Elden Ring, and the list kind of goes on and on. But there's still some big games releasing later this year, including Starfield. And interestingly enough, the developers are starting to open up about this game, and they are expecting some very happy fans, to say the least. Yeah, the hype is really starting to ramp up right now for Starfield, so we're going to go over that one a little later on in the video. And then also, we did get the PlayStation Plus lineup for the month of April, but also a surprise subtraction that seems to have caught fans off guard. This is definitely a little strange, but hopefully there's going to be some good news coming from this as well. I'll talk about that one in a bit as well. But other than that, let me ask, are you subscribed to the channel? Because if you're not and you want to stay up to date with all of the gaming news, make sure to hit that bell notification, subscribe button, and like button below. That way you keep up with the entire game industry day after day. Other than that though, let's just go and jump right into the video. Starting off with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as something very interesting seems to be happening right now. So what's happening here is that the official Pokemon channel has not only updated their Pokemon Scarlet and Violet playlist, but they also updated their Pokemon News playlist. Now we don't know exactly why they updated these playlists, but a lot of the times when you see something like this happen, that means that there's some type of private video that was posted and it just hasn't been officially publicly published just yet. So with that said, it is very possible that we could end up getting an update for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sooner than what many of us expected. Looking at past mainline Pokemon games and the lead up to those releases, a lot of people were kind of expecting an update sometime this May, possibly in June. But with these playlists updating here, that does signify that we could get an update for these games really at any moment. It could come today, it could come tomorrow, it could come next week. I mean, there's not really a guarantee or anything like that but at the same time it does seem like something might be happening with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and, and if we do get an update of course I will let you all know about that as soon as I possibly can. Nonetheless, if you are a fan of Pokemon and you're looking forward to those mainline entries later this year, which I think is really interesting with the Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 delay anyways, it really seems like this is going to be their premiere title for 2022 over on the Nintendo Switch. But yeah, keep your eyes peeled as it really seems like an update could come at pretty much any moment now. Moving on, the Xbox Games with Gold lineup has officially been announced for the month of April, and it's about pretty much what you've come to expect by this point. And that means you've gotten another list of pretty much mediocre games. And I, I mean, I hate to say that, but it really does feel like Xbox Games with Gold by this point is a bit of an afterthought. Nonetheless, though, I do think that there's at least one decent game here that I think that a lot of people will find some enjoyment with, but let's just actually go ahead and take a look at the list here. This includes Another Spirit, Hue, Outpost, Kalaki X, and then MX versus ATV Live. Like I said, this is pretty much what you've come to expect when it comes to their monthly games. Though at the same time, I do feel like that there's one game here that I would recommend, and that would be Hue. Hue is this puzzle platformer that plays around with different colors, and I think it's a pretty enjoyable game. And if you do have Xbox Live games with gold, definitely at least download Hue. I mean, at the same time, though, I think for fans that have been wanting Xbox Live games with gold to improve, I think this lineup here is pretty indicative on what you should come to expect from this service. I think Xbox Live Gold is just really hard for me to recommend to people anymore unless you play a lot of online multiplayer games because if that's the case and if you don't have something like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, well then it makes perfect sense to subscribe to a service like this. But if you're just looking for games to play on a monthly basis, well if that's the case then I think that you should just go with Xbox Game Pass. Yes, it's more expensive, but at the same time, that is absolutely the best subscription service is on the market right now, whereas Xbox Live Gold, it's a little debatable to say the least. Now for our next topic here, somebody did mention in the comments yesterday that I had forgotten to mention this earlier in the week, but as of yesterday, Rockstar did introduce a new subscription service to GTA Online. Yeah, not everybody's exactly thrilled with this idea, and I'm just going to kind of speak for myself here. I've never really been a big fan of subscription services for individual games. I just personally never got into it myself. I do understand it to an extent when it comes to MMOs, but nonetheless, regardless of how I feel about it, I know that in terms of a business that if 
probably makes a lot of sense. I'll get to that here in just a moment, but this subscription service will cost you $6 a month. They do say that it is exclusively available on GTA Online, on the PlayStation 5, and the Xbox Series X and S, and that by being a GTA Plus member gets you a recurring monthly GTA $500,000 direct deposit to your Maze Bank account, plus the opportunity to claim properties in and around Los Santos that unlock gameplay updates you may have missed out on, special vehicles upgrades, member-only discounts, GTA money, and RP bonuses, and more each month. So there you have it. If you are willing to pay for their $6 subscription, you will get a lot of extra benefits on a monthly basis. Though, like I said before, not everybody's thrilled about this idea, and a lot of people are kind of asking, why is this happening right now? I mean, GTA Online has been available since 2013, so we're talking about a nine-year-old game in GTA Online, and now all of a sudden they're introducing this subscription. But that right there is kind of the thing because even though this is an older game, still on a monthly basis, it is one of the better selling games on the market. It is incredibly popular still in 2022 and it's really showing no signs of slowdown. If, if anything, this release on the Xbox Series and the PlayStation 5, it's really only going to increase its popularity even more. So for them to have a game that's this popular, it makes perfect sense to introduce a subscription like this. And I almost guarantee that if this has any type of success, which I'm pretty sure it will, because I'm sure a lot of people will be willing to pay for this $6 subscription, then this is just kind of a hint towards the future. I'm pretty sure with them introducing a subscription service now, this is kind of preparing for GTA 6 when it does eventually release. At the same time, though, I really hope that this does not start a new trend with all these live service games. I think that there's a fear that if GTA Plus does have success, that suddenly other live service games will introduce their own subscription services as well. And I mean, that is something that we've seen with microtransactions over the years. While microtransactions can be controversial and a large part of the community absolutely hates them, companies time after time, they're validated for actually including microtransactions because a lot of people still will purchase them. And I think with the popularity of GTA Online, there's a good possibility while yes, again, a lot of people don't like the idea of a subscription service like this, at the same time, I'm sure that a lot of people will still purchase said subscription. Let me know what you think about all this though. How do you feel about Rockstar introducing a subscription service for GTA Online? Now, speaking of subscriptions, we also got some PlayStation Plus news yet again. They did officially reveal the PlayStation Plus lineup for the month of April, which is actually looking pretty good. But then they also announced a surprise subtraction as well. We'll get into that here in just a moment. But first, let's go and take a look at the lineup for the month of April. This includes Hood, Outlaws and Legends, SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for Bikini Bottom, Rehydrated. And then last but not least here, you also have Slay the Spire. Now, I can't really say too much about Hood, Outlaws and Legends, but what I can say is that SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom is surprisingly one of the better 3D platformers on the market. Truthfully, I think for a lot of people when they first see this game, they're probably expecting it not to be that great because a lot of times these cartoon based games, they're not all that great, but SpongeBob Rehydrated is the exception here. This game mechanically is excellent. It's got a good personality to it, as you'd expect from the SpongeBob franchise. And I mean, if you like 3D platformers, I absolutely would recommend SpongeBob Rehydrated. And then also Slay the Spire. This is a popular card battler type of game. Now, not everybody's going to be into these type of games, but if you are, Slay the Spire once again is one of the best of its class. In fact, you can just kind of take a look at its reviews and you can see that it has an 89 overall score in Metacritic. So this has been a very well received game and again if you do like card battling type of games definitely check out Slay the Spire. So yeah I would say that this is a pretty good lineup for the month of April though there was one surprise subtraction here that seems to have caught a lot of fans off guard and that would be the first game that is leaving the PlayStation Plus collection. Now the PlayStation Plus collection was introduced alongside the PlayStation 5 where basically if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus you would have access to some of the most popular games that released on the PlayStation 4. This includes various first-party and third-party games, and since it first launched, it has seen very little change, or at least until now. They did announce today that Persona 5 will be the first game leaving the service on May 11th. Now, they didn't really give an exact reason as to why it's leaving the service, which has caused a lot of speculation. Does this mean that other games will soon leave as well? Are they going to replace these games? And really, we don't have the answers to those questions as of yet. I think that there is a few possibilities of what could 
happen here, though, there is a possibility that maybe it could be replaced by Persona 5 Royal. I, I know that that's probably wishful thinking on my part, but maybe something like that could happen. Or, and I think that this is the more likely chance, I would not doubt at all if Persona 5 Royal does come to a subscription service, but not necessarily PlayStation Plus Collection. Keep in mind that Sony did just announce several new PlayStation Plus tiers, including PlayStation Plus Extra and PlayStation Plus Premium. So is there a chance that maybe Persona 5 Royal could end up being included in PlayStation Plus Extra? Maybe, though, again, this is just simply speculation. Definitely not a confirmation by any stretch of the means. But at the same time, it does look like that these games, or at least these third-party games, are under contract when it comes to the PlayStation Plus collection. With all that in mind, though, if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus, make sure to go over to the PlayStation Plus collection and add Persona 5 to your library before it leaves on May 11th. That way, you will continue to have access to this game going forward. Now, on to our final topic, we do have a small update on the highly much anticipated Starfield. Really, this is one of those rare games where we don't really know much about it, we haven't really seen much on it, but there's just so much excitement, so much hype being built for this game, and that's because this is coming from the creators that worked on Skyrim. They worked on Fallout 3, Fallout 4, and, and they really have put out some of the best RPGs of all time. I mean, you take a look at something like Skyrim, and even though that game is over a decade, old, it to this day is still being played by a lot of people, and that's just because of how good it actually is. So here with Starfield, this being Bethesda's first new IP in 20 years, yeah, there's a lot of excitement being built up for this game, and well, now the developers themselves are really starting to ramp up the hype. For Starfield. So this is coming from the Starfield lead designer and over on Bethesda.net, they released a pretty lengthy post talking about the development for Starfield and he had one particular statement here that is more than just a little bit exciting. So he was asked, what does Starfield mean to you? And check out his statement here. Saying you're going to create the studio's first new IP in 20 years is one thing. Actually pulling that off, that's a different story. It's been so awe-inspiring watching Starfield morph into this amazing game little by little, and with us covering so much new ground, there comes a point when you're working on a game and it's just kind of a mess, especially early on because, newsflash, that's what game development is. But then you get to that point where systems really start to come online, and things start to work well and gel, and you see everything forming into the vision you had when you first started on this crazy journey. When that first happened with Starfield, it really wasn't, oh, oh wow, yeah, this is something really special. Players are going to lose their minds. Now, we just have to finish it. So yeah, this is a pretty bold statement, and I think that if you weren't already excited about Starfield, I think a statement like this is at the very least going to catch your attention. What exactly is he talking about here, and while talking about their vision forming, why is it going to blow fans' minds? I mean, if it's going to do that, then it has to be a pretty good game, right? But that's kind of the thing, because it really seems like Starfield, it, it is a very ambitious title from everything that we've heard about it so far. It definitely seems like this is going to be a big game, and just based off of their reputation, that's kind of the expectations right now. At the same time, though, as we do head into the official reveal, which should actually be happening in the next couple of months, I do think that fans might want to just go ahead and temper their expectations a little bit. Hopefully, it does meet expectations expectations and I, I feel pretty confident that it probably will but at the same time I mean you never really know so just kind of go into this with a little bit of tempered expectations at the very least. Nonetheless though that is the good part about this for all of the hype that's being built around this game we should get that official reveal in the next few months as we do look towards E3 or whatever type of show Microsoft decides to put on this summer. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though, and we are going to talk about subscriptions once again because, you know, that's just a big thing right now. But I asked you all, if you are currently subscribed to PlayStation Plus, do you plan on upgrading to one of the additional tiers when they officially release it? And as you can see here, out of the 31% of you all that are subscribed to PlayStation Plus, 21% of you said that no, you are going to be sticking with PlayStation Plus Essential, which means everything's basically going to stay the same for you. Then 6% of you all said that you'll be upgrading to PlayStation Plus Premium, which includes various first-party and third-party games alongside several retro-style games from PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and even the PlayStation Portable. And then 4% of you also said that yes, you will be upgrading to PlayStation Plus Extra, which has a large category catalog of first party and third party games but does not have those retro style of games. 
So there you have it. At least 10% of you all are looking to upgrade PlayStation Plus when you have the chance. And that's pretty much the reason that PlayStation is doing what they're doing. While I would not necessarily consider this an Xbox Game Pass competitor as places like Bloomberg was trying to sell, at the same time, I still feel like there is some good things here. And I think that several people will upgrade because yeah, there's definitely some good things here. Now, personally for myself, I'm gonna kind of wait for more information. I would have been interested in the retro games if they would have offered that in a cheaper subscription. I'm not really thrilled with the idea that it's being included in the most expensive tier. I kind of wish that they had a completely separate tier that was just focused on retro games, similar to something like Nintendo Switch Online. I feel like that that would be good, but at the same time, I'm still waiting for more information. Are these retro games going to be sold separately? That's a big question. Are we going to see any type of performance improvements? Will they include trophies? I definitely think that there's some questions regarding all of that, but I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see. And that goes for a lot of the, these PlayStation Plus tiers right now. While they did finally reveal all of this, there's still a lot of questions that remains, including the catalog of games that will be included in PlayStation Plus Extra. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to put notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.